This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host. In this program, we're going to be meeting with diplomats and foreigners who are here in Pakistan, and we're going to find out what they really think about the country. So let's go. So our guest today is Tom Grand, a Dutch travel blogger, and he should be waiting for us somewhere here. So let's go find him. Hi, Tom. Hey, how are you? Good, how are nice you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. What a wonderful location here. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> huh? I haven't been here yet. So. Yeah. So um, how long have you been here in Pakistan now? It's almost three weeks already. Oh, yeah. wow. So I've been uh, yeah, having a, an amazing time. It's been uh, yeah. better than I ever expected. So. Really? So what, like, what made you want to come to Pakistan? I mean, you've been to so many places. So did you hear from somebody something about this country or? It was actually already in 2014 that I wanted to come to Pakistan. Okay. Um, back then the visa situation uh, was a bit difficult mm. and I did not get a visa. Oh, okay. Uh, but I was really intrigued by visiting Pakistan. Um, and for me, as in the, in the years that I've traveled now seven years around the world, and I like, I love to change perceptions of people and I feel like very privileged that I can do that. And yeah. Pakistan has an image that I think in the Western world is a bad image. And I was like, I know that it's not. So I felt so excited to come and show everyone uh, the opposite. So that was for me the biggest reason, uh, one of the biggest reasons to come to Pakistan, to show everyone it's not what you think, guys. Pakistan is like a peaceful country. Pakistan yeah. has so much beauty. There's so many things to do. And obviously on top of all that, its people are so amazing. So great. I was super excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so glad you finally got to come here then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, where have you traveled in the country so far? Um, unfortunately, I only had three weeks ish. Mm. Uh, so I've been to, uh, I started in Islamabad. Mm -hmm. um, I started to get the feel with the country a little bit. Um, and from Islamabad, I moved onwards to uh, Lahore. Okay. Um, I straight away did a food tour, uh, wow. got in touch with the amazing uh, food. I tasted uh, all the street foods in the old city. Um, and after four days, I moved back to Islamabad and was about to fly to Gilgit. Okay. But the weather didn't permit uh, me to do so. Yeah, that's yeah. a bit difficult. Yeah, but it was actually pretty good because the next day I flew to Skardu oh. and um, I was uh, super happy awesome. I, made, uh, I made it also to Skardu. Yeah. yeah. And then I traveled around there for about three, four days. Wow. And then did a whole loop uh, to the South Plains and then up north. Uh, finally made it to uh, Upper Hunza, which was uh, unbelievably amazing. beautiful, yeah. That sounds so great. So, how much time do you have left still here in the country? Unfortunately, only two days left. Oh no! Yeah, so that's a pity, but I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll promise Pakistan, I'll be back. Yeah. Awesome, so what places do you have left that you still want to visit? Like, are you going to make it there still or? No, this time I won't make it there. I will be, uh, next two days I will be in Islamabad, okay. my last two days. Right. But yeah, there's so many places I really want to go to still. Um, I haven't even seen Karachi. Right. Um, one of, yeah, I think Ashum is the biggest city actually, yeah. right? In, Isn't uh, it funny? Because it's somehow so far away from yeah, here. So yeah. yeah, I haven't been there either. <laughs> no, really? Oh. <laughs> no, so I'm really looking forward to it. Like, because that's like, I think the cultural hub, yes. the chaos. Um, where everything is like, um, like authentic uh, Pakistani lifestyle, and yeah. I, I really want to experience that. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. so many time. more places. Uh, Peshawar, <laughs> I want to go. Right. Yeah, you should go. Um, I want to actually also go to Balochistan mm. and explore it uh, also by myself and just yeah. yeah, see that part of the country as well. Yeah, but what do you think? Should we take a little walk around the park? Yeah, chalo. Chalo. <laughs> But yeah, so you mentioned that you knew that Pakistan wasn't going to be the way that it's presented in the Western media. But like, what was your impression of the country? I mean, what did you think when you first came here? Oh, I, I, I arrived in Islamabad, you know, yeah. and I was like actually surprised. Like Islamabad doesn't feel to me 
like a South Asian city. It's yeah, so green, it's exactly. beautiful, it's very peaceful, um, the traffic is not uh, massive. So I was a, uh, I was a surprised, uh, exactly. to be honest. Yeah, because you've seen like other South Asian countries. Yeah, so I expected actually, uh, I probably expected Rawalpindi city yeah. center, but <laughs> I ended up in Islamabad in the green and the mansions and uh, right. Yeah, so I was, uh, yeah, for me it was like a, a culture shock. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like. so funny. So it was like more Western. Kind of yeah, yeah, expected. totally. And people were, um, uh, and people were moving, relaxed, and uh, say, just saying, "Hey, where you're from?" Rather than, uh, "You want to buy from me?" You know, like it yeah, is normally. Exactly. So, um, I was, I felt very relaxed when I arrived, wow. and um, yeah, it made me feel straight away at home. To be honest. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Was there anything else that like really surprised you? Something that you weren't expecting? Um, yeah, what for me was uh, like a funny thing to see. It was, um, I think, uh, for uh, Pakistan is a country where uh, the, the people wear the most their traditional clothes. Yeah. Like everywhere else in the world I've been, like there are people that wear traditional clothes, mm. there are people that wear, but in Pakistan uh, the majority uh, wears the traditional yeah. clothes. It's actually, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Which actually is very identical, like a uh, unique It thing. is, and it's like also because of the weather, like it's so much more comfortable wearing shalwar kameez actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you I'm, get to wear it? I was about to buy one, I was like, oh, you're gonna buy one and ended yeah. up in the end uh, not buying one. Yeah. So, I think yeah. you should. <laughs> <laughs> For next time. Yeah, yeah, especially when I go to Karachi and it's so hot. Exactly. I need one, I guess one. So which color would you recommend? I don't know, I think maybe dark blue or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> you could try that. And so you are obviously very active on social media because that's what you do. Um, so you've obviously probably shared some photos or stuff like that on social yeah. media. Uh, how has the response been? Like how have your followers reacted? Yeah, the response is absolutely amazing. It yeah. makes my travel to Pakistan so rewarding. Uh, the people that I do daily uh, videos on Instagram whenever oh. I have internet in the okay. mountains that was a bit <laughs> harder yeah uh, it's about how I see Pakistan how I experience it uh, the people I meet the food I eat so yeah uh, the Pakistanis are obviously very proud and they're also very happy that I'm here so yeah uh, for me it has been super rewarding and that also made me feel like I, I don't want I'm not done here yet you know I don't want to leave yet. yeah 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 I want to um, I want to give Pakistanis like a, a little, like how to say, um, exposure to, to mm. all my rest of the world, all my followers to like show them like that I show them yeah, that yeah, Pakistan yeah. is a really cool country to visit. Well, that's really nice. Yeah. Cool. But how do you feel? Has Pakistan been like an easy country to travel in? Yeah, I must say, that's actually also pretty easy. There are hmm. long distance buses. The yeah. long distance buses are actually pretty luxurious. They're tourist class worthy. Yeah. Um, people are so helpful in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, getting around by car in cities is easy because there is uh, there is internet and you can have uh, the, the the taxi apps. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Like... Up north, I must say, there's a bit of a lack. Yeah. So if you want to move from Gilgit to Upper Hunza. You just gotta find someone. Right. And like a Jeep. Yes, yeah, a Jeep or like there's actually hitchhiking is a possibility, but okay. I, I, I understand as well that a lot of travelers, Western travelers, are a bit like skeptic about hitchhiking. Mm. Uh, which here is pretty easy because as, as, yeah. as a Western to go on the side of the street, everyone stops. Yeah, and, and it's go. easier for a man as well. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I, yeah. That's also true. Mm. But I, I don't feel like even that it has been. I mean, it is an affordable country to travel. Yeah. So even if you get a four-hour taxi, mm. it is for a Western. It's affordable to do that. Yeah. Where in another country, you would never think about a four-hour taxi. Yeah, right? you can't do <laughs> no. that. Exactly. It's way too much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, obviously, the Pakistani government is now trying to boost tourism, yeah. trying to get more like people from abroad to come and visit Pakistan. Do you think the country has potential for becoming like a tourism hub? Oh my God, yeah, I, I am so excited about that. Because yeah. I think Pakistan is a sleeping giant. Hmm. Honestly, what you guys, what, like, what Pakistan has in, in the north, all these mountains only already, yeah. that's something unique. Like, I have been to a lot of countries where they have amazing mountains, like Himalayas or yeah. are the biggest uh, mountains in South America. Mm. But it's always like walking in an arena. 
Yeah. And I've never experienced that in another country because the mountains are here, there, but also behind you. Right. And I get a lot like of countries, yeah. like also like Himalayas or name for example, the mountains are there, mm. but they now are behind you because if you turn around, it's flat land. Right. And in Pakistan, I have the feeling, so there are so many really cool things to do and yeah. like the people are so nice the food is good um you have four seasons you know mm. um everything is there, there is everything yeah. it's just now about like okay people need to find it like need to need to see that it is possible to travel here so yeah. i think it's it's uh the people that come here have kind of like yeah, people like me like bloggers youtubers instagrammers they mm. have a a not a responsibility but a task to show everyone that it's possible yeah and on the government side they have to facilitate the needs because they're also like obviously there's so challenging things yeah. to be honest so of course they need to overcome that but it starts always with the adventurous people and when the adventurous yeah. people come then, <laughs> then like the rest. The, then comes we'll the rest yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> excellent but yeah should we go find something to do yeah cool <laughs> yeah all right Time to take a short break. See you in a bit. Welcome back. I'm here with Dutch travel blogger Tom Grond and uh, let's go check out some birds. <laughs> wow, look at this. Oh. What are these, like Many female birds. peacocks or something? <laughs> wow. Fancy birds. <laughs> yeah. Wow, amazing. Let's try oh, and beat them. We have a good them. audience. We yeah. have a good audience. Come here. <laughs> Hello. Okay. <laughs> Just popcorn, guys. Have you seen a lot of peacocks here in Pakistan? Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, and four. It's my first one. Oh, no, yeah. I haven't seen any. No, so far, well, nothing cool. really. Yeah, too bad they don't have the male ones. They're really, there really is nice one looking. Here, I think. Mm. But yeah, so you've been to almost 100 countries, is that right? 102, actually. Oh, now Pakistan it's 102. Pakistan is country 100, number two. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's been a long trip. Uh, Oh wow. <laughs> that scared me. Um, I started traveling in December 2012 and it was actually three days ago I hit day 2500. Wow. I was in uh, Upper Hunza. Okay. Where I celebrated my 2500th day of continuously traveling the world. Wow, that's that's amazing. And like, how did you even get into this whole yeah, thing? Like, how did you become a travel blogger? You know, it never was my intention to become a travel blogger. Like, traveling is my my biggest passion. Mm. So I just started traveling, yeah. and after a while, I came up with the idea of like, okay, I'm gonna document my travels mm. and how I'm gonna do that. And it came Instagram became a big thing. Yeah. And I was just right in time to start Instagram. It was 2014-ish. Hmm. I was on my way already for two years and I decided I wanted to have a channel where I could broadcast all my trips, my yeah. cool photos. Uh, so I came up with uh, Travel Tom Tom. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> that's I your thought, Instagram yeah, handle. Yeah, that's my Instagram handle. And I thought about, that is a cool handle where I can um, inspire people basically to to do the same as I did, just take a leap of faith and break all boundaries what society wants you to do. Yeah. But just go on a, on an adventure and see uh, where it ends. That's amazing. And so a lot of people would obviously have the question like, how can you afford to stay on the road? Like, how do you finance your travels? Do you get enough money from blogging or how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it, it, the, the first thing is if you have to, um, if you get into this business as uh, for the money mm. or for being cool, then it's don't do it yeah. because it's it takes so much. long, yeah. you know, it takes so long to build it up. And for me, it was like four years traveling continuously around the world where I kind of only started after four years, I uh, started to get uh, some recognition like from it I started to have marketing value yeah. suddenly I got free trips because of my Instagram right. account then I started blogging and started making money from my blog which okay. is uh, which is in a way of like you get advertising on your, your website and then you just make uh, money yeah 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 no, that's really cool 
What were you doing before? Like, were you a student? What, yeah, like, no, what I was actually your... had a cool job. I worked in a Dutch uh, welfare um, a department. Okay. Um, and I really liked my job, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It was good fun, with cool colleagues. But I never really wanted to fit into the standard lifestyle. I wanted adventure. I wanted to meet people. I wanted to see the world, you know? And I wanted to learn as well. Uh, there are so many misconceptions and I think by traveling you learn so much. Yeah, that's very and true. That was uh, how I got like rolled into this whole thing and uh, yeah, I love my job but there are cooler things to yeah. do than uh, a 9 to 5 job. I think. Yeah, exactly. So it was just like breaking out of the cycle kind of a thing you wanted to do. Yeah, yeah and I just wanted to be, uh, to be different, you know, to show people that if you have a passion that you can literally like you can it get, gets you a long way hmm. it's not it's, it's not uh, always a success you know hmm. but if you follow your passion you yeah, you never feel like working anymore you know exactly because so, you're doing never, what you want yeah. it's, it's <laughs> it is a lot of work uh, being a blogger but it doesn't feel like it yeah you know there's so many cool benefits of it that yeah that's really cool but yeah so when you were growing up what were like your dream destinations where where did you really want to go always yeah that's a good question i actually never really was into traveling until i think about 16 17 oh, okay. to be honest i never had that uh feeling i wanted to explore the world and Unless, yeah, what was the first time I went uh, abroad was basically when I started living in, the, I lived in the Caribbean on Aruba. That was uh, where first time I got in touch with it and I fell in love straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, What yeah. were you doing there? Um, I went there actually to write my thesis. Okay. Yeah, so I, I lived there for six months. Uh, I lived on the beach with all students. Hmm. Uh, we had an amazing time. I met people from South America, a lot of Americans. And it just learned so much, like, and it was so curious how these people lived. They were talking about living in the mountains in Colombia with their family, and I was like, oh wow, what is that like? Yeah. It looks like, a, you know, only see this in the movies, but I was like, oh wait, I'm going here and explore myself. Yeah. Uh, so that was the first time I got into traveling, so I never really had a dream mm. destination or something. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say have been the coolest destinations, the best countries you've visited so far? Yeah, it's so hard to say. You know? Is it? Um, after a hundred countries, um, how can you compare a beach destination with Pakistan with the mountains, yeah. you know, or Nepal uh, versus, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Holland? It's like flat or it's like very hard to say, but like it's uh, a lot of times it's experiences you have in a country that makes you rate a country better than another. Yeah, yeah. No one country is better, but like more exciting. Um, I really was in love for the first time when I saw it straight away when I flew into Hawaii. Okay. Hawaii is like, it's such an, a magical place far away from civilization, somewhere in the middle of the ocean. That was amazing and kind of have the same feeling with New Zealand. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was also beautiful. But then I also love the lifestyle of Argentina with the barbecue. Um, it had so many cool things to do with the, with the dancing salts on the streets and things like that. Nice. Uh, and for mountains, it was always Nepal, but now obviously I got a new love. And Pakistan definitely yeah. adds up to it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely in my uh, in my list of favorite countries. Awesome. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Don't go. Come. Oh, okay, he's, he's climbing he's away. Leaving. He's uh, like, no, <laughs> you're boring. <laughs> But yeah, so you've recently, or I don't know if it was very recently, but you've been to Syria and Iraq as well. How were these yes. experiences? Yes, uh, that was uh, an amazing experience. I think it's kind of, obviously it's not the same, but like comparable to Pakistan in a sense of like, they have a very bad image yeah. as well. So in the Western world, if you say you go to Syria, you go to Iraq, everyone is like, wow. Yeah, like why you would crazy? you do that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Iraq in some sense is kind of different because uh, northern Iraq, there is like Kurdistan, yeah. and Kurdistan is an autonomous region of Iraq, which is basically pretty safe already for a long, long time. Mm. And they are open to visitors, but it was so cool to see how they live their lifestyle in a country that is very uh, unstable. Mm. And yeah. to see those people going on with their lives and just build up 
like, and build, also chase their dreams, uh, have um, uh, just cafes and bars that are lively at night, the streets, and people couldn't understand, like, oh wow, is this Iraq, you know? Yeah. And they have, have amazing totally landscapes yeah. as well. Um, Syria was a different story. I went when to was that? Syria is about now six weeks ago, seven, or maybe lying nine, oh, ten okay, weeks ago. Okay, so it was very recent. Yeah, very wow. recent, like uh, almost almost two months ago, I think it was. Mm. Now. Uh, that was obviously a different story. Iraq, um, Syria just got out of war, basically is still in war, exactly. like in the north, yeah. uh, western part, there's still war going on. Um, but the rest of the country is stable. Um, I felt completely safe traveling there. Um, I got the inspiration from uh, a good friend of mine, which is basically a kind of a celebrity here okay. in uh, Pakistan, Eva Zubek. Oh, okay. So Eva inspired me to go there and she said like it's an amazing country to travel. And I decided, okay, then I want to see it with my own eyes. And there are so, there's so much history, like bas <laughs> basically, our civilization as we know it of nowadays kind of start, starts there. Like mm. if you go back uh, thousands of years ago, that's where they found the first civilizations. Yeah. So exactly. it's abundance of history. Wow. Uh, amazing um, architecture. There's Roman architecture. There's been a Roman Empire, an Ottoman Empire. Exactly. It's so beautiful to see. But on the other side, it's kind of sad that, for example, uh, there was a southern amphitheater Cool. Amazing place, cooler than the Colosseum in Rome, in Rome I would yeah. say. But we were the first uh, European tourists in nine years. Mm. Really sad, and the people really suffer, obviously, because it, like it has been a shut down country for nine years. And um, of course. I felt very privileged to go there and to be part of the how to say the build up again of the country mm. because the Syrians are in need of positive news. There is right. so much bad news about them for nine years. And the people are just as lovely as they are here in Pakistan. Yeah, you know, people are, 99% of the people are just really good hearted. Like mm. they are inviting, they're welcoming. They want to show you their country. They want to sh give you their food. They want to make you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, uh, that was a perfect shot. <laughs> But yeah, so you were there so recently and then you came to Pakistan, of course you, wow, that was close. <laughs> so um, obviously you must have like seen what a huge difference there is between like a country that's actually still in conflict and Pakistan, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Like uh, for me here, this is, it feels like, weird to say, but it feels like traveling and just in just another country. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, everything here is, it's it's pretty well organized, you know. As we talked before, there are yeah. like uh, for tourists, there is there are domestic flights, um, yeah. there are functioning airports, you know. It's it's not everywhere. Like uh, in, in Syria, was nothing like this. Exactly. So no, like um, traveling here is much easier and much relaxer. To yeah. Be honest. yeah. Great. But yeah, what do you think? Should we go find something to eat next? Yeah, totally. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Time to take a short break. See you in a bit. Okay, let's go. Welcome back. I'm here with Dutch travel blogger Tom and um, just ordered some food and I think it's about to arrive. <laughs> Great. So yes. have you, this is all kinds of things I will tell oh, you in a bit. <laughs> interesting. So we have some gol gappe, we have some chaat ah. and i um, not sure, let's see. <laughs> have you gotten to try a lot of Pakistani food? Uh, yes, I, I mentioned before I did a food tour. In yeah. Lahore. Yeah, that's and I amazing. Think I definitely had this, and I thought okay. it was beans, but it was not beans. Um, I'm very. So there you go. I love tasting everything, but I'm very bad in like telling what it actually is. I, I might be able to tell you. This I think is just chaat. So yeah. Oh, good. It's very spicy. Is it spicy? Do you like oh, spicy food? I love food? spicy food. Good, me too. 
That's great. Mm. I love it. Uh, did you mention that you had been to India as well? Yeah, I have been to India as well. Yeah, mm. four times actually. So then you must have had like a slight idea of what the yeah, food would yeah, be yeah, like. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and to be honest, like yeah, Indian food like um, from this side of the world is a lot of times so surprising. Yeah, uh, you don't know what it is, you know. Like so you just get something, mm. and it turns out to be like um, amazing, like a spinach, right. a spinach uh, curry, or um, mm. uh, and all these kind of things, cauliflower curries, and I'm yeah. like, wow, we'll never order things like that really? in the Western world. Yeah, Something yeah, yeah. with cauliflower? No, it's a no-go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's but here very, it tastes really good. Yeah, I know. It's like a, all these vegetables that sound kind of boring, mm. they end up tasting really amazing in curries and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. How's the dahi balle? Yeah, good. It's like nice and spicy. I love yeah. it. <laughs> and I mean, now you've spent a little bit of time in Islamabad. Have you gotten to go to any of the restaurants here? How has that been? Yeah, I went to a couple of restaurants. I think I went to the standard restaurants where expats mm -hmm. maybe go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that were really good. But I also went to uh, a restaurant that served only Pakistani food. Okay. I really like that one. Hmm. That was really good. Um, yeah, just because I um, often I don't even know what's on the menu. All right. Like it's just like okay, Says all these names and you don't know what all it these is. names <laughs> and they don't say anything to me. It's just like yeah. But most of the people are so nice and so like um, helpful, happy to help. Mm. Uh, so they explain everything to you. So yeah, I love local restaurants. Yeah. In the end of the Great. day, it's um, you also explore a country by tasting the country. That's very true. I like I like that approach. Should we try some of these um, yeah. golgappe? Have you tried them before? I think I did in Lahore, to be honest. Okay. Mm. So then, what you have to do is like kind of dip it in. Dip it, yeah. And then you just have to eat the whole thing. <laughs> in once? Yeah. First, dip it. Oh my god! It's a little it's bit be difficult, funny. yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. One, two, three. All right. One, two, three. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, was that spicy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like um, you mentioned that you expected it to be a lot busier, like sort of like Lahore or something yeah, like yeah. that. Did you like, did you Google Islamabad before you came here? Did you get any impression online? No, 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 I never do that. Oh, you never do that? No, That's no, so funny. no, not the way I travel. So you wanted to prepare. be like a s surprise, basically. Yeah, because if no. you got a, if you got a, Research, you mm. got to start having expectations. Oh, and people that's have expectations, they get disappointed. Yeah. So I always say, I go in blank, always. Cool. So I have never a clue. I just imagine things. Mm. Like, so is Lama, but oh, I thought, oh, it's just gonna be like a big melt pot of like, uh, like chaos and uh, right. the, the horn and like uh, uh, traffic yeah. and, and it's not nothing at all. at all like this. So, exactly. So if you have zero expectations, you can only be positively surprised. That's so nice. If you have expectations, there's always that like, oh, I thought it would be like, you know. Hmm. So I always go in cool. like this. So for me, Islamabad would be, uh, yeah, was a big positive surprise. That's yeah. really great. And so I wanted to also talk about a little bit back home, where you come from. I mean, where in, in the Netherlands are you actually from? All the way in the southeast turn tip. Okay. Like as far away from Amsterdam as you can get. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, so I grew up uh, basically super close to the German border hmm. and, the, and the Belgian border. So, and the Belgian side, I speak French and the German side, I speak German. Okay. And we speak Dutch, hmm. but at home, we don't speak really Dutch. So that's not my first language. My first language is our own language. Which is a mix of uh, French, uh, German, Dutch, and our okay. own. So it's like, a, like you say, like they have here, like the Balti language, hmm. like a very regional language, which yeah. is, um, which obviously has a lot of similarities with um, with Dutch, with but more with German. So like I'm from a village town, so we okay. have also like a lot of green, like a little hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. So yeah. you're more of a village person than like a city. Yeah, I reckon actually, yeah, it should be right. <laughs> But um, I love both. Yeah. Like it's also the way I travel. I love to explore uh, 
uh, cities, mm. like mm. do city trips with also uh, like the mountains. I feel most happy in the mountains. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a lot of mountains in the Netherlands. Oh no, not we at have all. nothing. <laughs> that's why it's called yeah, the Netherlands. Yeah, it's the Netherlands. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's why you like the mountains so yeah, much. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So how often do you get to go back home? Actually, going back home in two days. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Pretty excited about that. Yeah. Um, I have two little nephews. Mm -hmm. which I have uh, hardly seen actually in my mm. life so I love to go back home so now and then um, mm -hmm. I can I, I plan my own trips I'm free to yeah. do whatever or where to go yeah. although sometimes I have uh, sponsored trips that I that I that are planned for me like uh, in advance mm. and I, one of them is in a couple of days in a week from now okay so then I have like four days at home so right. before my uh, sponsored trip I go back home mm. see my friends and family that's for a couple nice. of days, then we move on. And then you move and then, on again. Uh, <laughs> then we travel again. <laughs> Do you ever get this feeling like, okay, now I'm done. Like, I don't want to move from one country to the next. I want to stay in one place for a little while now. Uh, I get that a lot. Though. Yeah. Yeah, especially the longer I'm on the, my way, the longer, the more I think that. But it's the off the beaten path destinations, like seeing complete, completely new things mm. um, that keeps that that yeah inspires me to do more uh, trips yeah uh, I, I sometimes think okay now I want to set them for a month and then I have the, all these ideas and I was like oh no 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 I want to see this yeah. I want to do that and for example here in the mountains in uh, in, uh, in North uh, Pakistan I felt like oh my god I, I can't leave you know I have so many things to see but I kind of have to yeah so I have to fly out of Pakistan uh, within a couple of days but yeah that's what I'm saying I'll be back because exactly you see and and that's what another reason like I can never really or not never but at the moment I'm not able to settle down yeah because that is definitely not uh, an option because I want to come back first and see like more of the yeah. of the north of Pakistan. Yeah, of course. No, that's amazing. And do you ever like, do you miss anything in particular from home? Like aside from your family and friends, anything like any not experiences? Really, to be honest, uh, maybe parties with my friends. Yeah. To go to big parties, uh, things like that, I will miss. Uh, but for the rest, uh, yeah, traveling gives you so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, meeting um, a very interesting people, hmm. uh, sharing experiences, uh, the most amazing landscapes, uh, homestays with families. Uh, right. I'm, I feel like welcome everywhere. Did you uh, get to do any homestays here in Pakistan? Yeah, I did a lot, like basically oh, yeah? all the time. Oh, that's amazing. I like to travel like that because I, for, before, like a year ago, I used to travel uh, a lot in the luxury segment. Mm -hmm which was amazing because before I never experienced that really because mm. I was always a backpacker and then became like my Instagram became big yeah and suddenly I was invited in the Maldives so free and I stayed in the Maldives for a month amazing hotels and exp experiences were like uh, crazy mm. I could never imagine I would be able to do that but then I realized that oh, this is not so true to me mm. you know that's not who you are yeah like mm. I love it and I definitely want to do it like uh, so now and then again but homestays like me as I said the 72 year old man that became my best friend yeah. in Pakistan that was the most so amazing. that's how you met him. It's authentic yeah. it's um yeah that's the way I like to travel because from those people I love to, I love to learn the most if I stay in a hotel there's no interaction with a local yeah exactly. so I try to stay guest houses learn look learn to the way the locals live and but yeah so that like whole family stay homestay thing must be pretty good also since you always travel alone or almost always yeah. travel alone so you don't feel that yeah lonely. and i feel like uh, these people are super welcoming you know they mm. want to show you how they live they cook for you you yeah. can see how they cook um they're obviously not going to cook uh, um, a spaghetti bolognese no right. they're going to make you something authentic yeah so you get to try local food um, if you even want to, you can go with them to, they invite you to everything. They invite you to their work, they invite you to, I can uh, homestay in, uh, in the mountains who went to pick uh, onions, um, um, who went to, to the cow to bring uh, the food for the cow, you no know. No way. Yes, yeah, so we did all like the, the, the things like uh, local what village do. people do, you yeah. know. And then they have to check on the water up and close to the glacier, you know, like, oh mm. my God, like. 
most of my friends have never even seen a glacier, you know? Exactly. Like, and they are just say, oh, we need to check the water up on, you know? Yeah. Things like that, that really gets me uh, away from hotels, to be honest. So, yeah. yeah, that sounds like you get to see like an experience with really unique things yeah, like yeah. that. That's amazing. And um, do you feel like you're going to continue doing this for the rest of your life or <laughs> just oh, <wow>. for now? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, no, for now, for sure. I have, I always come up with new ideas that inspire me mm. to travel more or different. And like uh, about three, four months ago, I thought about traveling to all the countries in the world. So that's going to be like another 100 almost because yeah. 193, 197 countries mm. in the world. I've only been to 102, so... <laughs> Which is quite a lot. Always. Yes, yeah. <laughs> More than <laughs> But if you people. add like uh, five uh, days uh, per country, that's 500 days. If I would continuously yeah. travel from now, but it's impossible. It, yeah. That probably means there's another two years, three years before I finish that. And you know, I want to already <laughs> come back to Pakistan. You know, and there are so many countries mm. I've been to where I also want to go back. So, yeah. Um, yeah, do I see myself doing this for the rest of my life? No, but... Mm. Yeah, for the coming years, yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. That's really nice. And how much time do you usually spend in each country? Or does that totally depend on the totally country? Totally depends. Yeah. Like here, I spent three weeks and it doesn't feel even that so long. Yeah. Um, in Syria, I was eight days. In yeah. Kurdistan, I was 12 days. Right. Uh, super small countries. I, mm. I, I go three, four days. Like yeah. uh, if it's just uh, Singapore, I've been often to Singapore. But like there's countries that are super small or uh, Pacific Islands or Caribbean Islands where mm. I feel like, yeah, okay, I want to I want to go there, just kind of to go there. Um, meet up with a local, uh, see something specific about the island, but then move on. But there are also countries I really want to, like I want to do a train ride through Russia, or maybe the US, mm. so from cross from east to west, you know, these yeah, kind of things. Yeah, it's going to take longer, yeah. That's going to take like a month or maybe yeah, even yeah, more. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. But yeah, have you gotten to meet any Pakistani travel bloggers? Been yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Um, I think they're actually doing a really cool, a good job. You know, there are pretty big accounts, uh, yeah. Pakistani bloggers, and they have like a, a huge uh, support behind them yeah, because exactly. everything they do, is Pakistanis love what you know. Mm. So yeah, I was at a meeting um, with a bunch of food bloggers as well. Um, uh, in introduced to some other bigger in uh, accounts on Instagram that was really cool uh, to see their take on it mm. and uh, yeah to hear their stories about how they travel and about how they work here this is pretty cool that's really nice and I think one of the most interesting things about Pakistan for somebody who comes from abroad is how people that's like how many people speak English so well yeah. it's so easy to communicate with most people right yeah it's super easy I, I must say um, there's hardly ever I got to someone that spoke no English yeah. or like where I was completely lost and no one exactly. could help me. You know, there's yeah. always people around. Yeah, um, and it's also social in. media. Yeah, Same yeah, yeah, and exactly, yeah, 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 exactly. That's really nice. And so one of the things I was wondering, like obviously Instagram is the main medium for you. Um, who takes your pictures if you're traveling alone? Good question. <laughs> Uh, no, I travel a lot with uh, uh, other bloggers. Okay. Um, hmm. So now and then, um, I use other people as tripods. Okay. <laughs> I set them exactly. Uh, I said, here, how my camera? You only have to click on me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I use an uh, action camera mm -hmm, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also have a tripod, so it's like a lot of things. But fair enough, uh, traveling alone, solo, there is a lot of times a challenge. It's like, okay, I want this picture. How am I going to get that picture? Yeah. I'm like, I have the frame, I have the shot, everything in my head. Mm. But now I need someone to take the exact same thing I have in my head. So that <laughs> is pretty challenging sometimes. Yeah. And often it's also the outcome is just not the way I want it. But there's no other way, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I enjoy traveling solo a lot. So yeah, that's one of the negative sides of it. So. Of course. And I mean, I'm sure you spend a lot of time like thinking about getting the perfect Instagram picture as well, right? Not anymore. Not anymore? No, You've become changed. so good at it. Yeah. No, it's more like, uh, I think the perfect picture is uh, it's taken already uh, a trillion times. Yeah. Like I'd rather have an authentic picture, like hmm. somewhere that is me. Like I don't like to pose for pictures. I yeah. don't really like to. Um, 
how to say, to think about it in my head and set it up. No, I see it, I'll take it. But yeah. I don't want to go some specific place to take that shot. And that's, I think a right. lot of people travel now like this nowadays. They okay. just go to places because they want a photo like that. And I'm like, <laughs> that's not the essential of traveling, mm. I think. Like yeah. for me, it is going places and experience the whole thing and then get a good photo out of it. Yeah. But a lot of people nowadays, it's just like the modern social media, right? It pushed yeah. it in that direction. They go there and they just see that and they're like, oh, but we want this picture. And then they take this picture and leave. And I'm like, wow, but. Yeah, so where are you going next then? You mentioned West Africa and after yeah. that? Uh, I go to Europe for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and after that is about uh, yeah, Christmas and then I do a lot of winter jobs. So oh, okay. it's Canada, um, but also want to go to see if I can get visas for countries that are harder to get into, like Algeria, mm -hmm. um, uh, Chad, uh, places like that, uh, where you actually need a, a pretty tough visa process. Okay. Uh, and I want to try to to go to these countries and maybe Saudi Arabia, because at the moment they opened up their visa policy for tourists. Yeah, which is... So I'm like super excited to go there. Uh, not that I want to be a pioneer, mm. but I've always wanted to go there anyway. Yeah. And I checked into uh, going there uh, before already, but now there's like uh, an opportunity to do it pretty easily. So yeah, I want to see if it's possible to go around there without a plan and to go from A to B when no one has ever really done that because there were no real tourists yeah. without a plan. Most tourists that have been have either been for relig religious reasons or business reasons. Exactly. And then, saw a couple sites here and there but i just want to go to a place and then see like how do i actually get to the other city like yeah, yeah. there's probably no organized tourism so it's going to be a big adventure that sounds yeah. very nice great and what advice would you have for let's say other westerners or whatever i mean foreigners who want to come and visit pakistan yeah, first of all, just do it, you know? Yeah. Don't think, you know? It's like thinking is overrated. It's like, <laughs> it's, they have seen my videos on Instagram. They have um, I've seen other people doing it. There's so many examples nowadays of people that travel to Pakistan and had such an amazing time. So yeah. why are you all still in doubt? What is the, what is it behind it? Is it, is it the family that says, oh, be careful? Is it, you know? Like it's just a matter of breaking boundaries right now. You just uh, just make for yourself you the mindset. Okay, I'm going to Pakistan. I just book a ticket. Like it's not that you're gonna be in Islamabad and like oh my god, I'm gonna be. You know, no. Yeah. It's as you come to a green city, you can relax and just adapt to the lifestyle. It's affordable. There are cool things to do. The people are amazing. Like just come, you know, and experience it for yourself because. I, I don't know what most people is hold, what what is yeah it's just that the, the picture in the media that is holding yeah. them back and yeah my my best advice for them is just, just book come. a ticket yeah, <laughs> yeah book a ticket that's a nice yeah. one okay great all right time for our rapid fire round are you ready yes all right let's do this shalwar kameez or suit suit great Lahore or Karachi Lahore I haven't been to Karachi okay fair enough. <laughs> Um, Blue Mosque in Istanbul or Badshahi Mosque in Lahore? Wow. <laughs> uh, Blue Mosque is under construction nowadays. Uh, <laughs> but definitely the one in Lahore because I was overwhelmed and I did not expect to see such a beautiful, amazing mosque. Uh, I was really surprised. Great. Skardu or Hunza? Oh wow, that's brother or sister, you know, that's not fair. <laughs> because K2 is my dream and it's in Skardu, right? But for now, Upper Hunza. Okay, hmm. interesting. Europe or Asia? Asia, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Pakistan or India? Uh, Pakistan. Wow, really? Yeah, so far, yes. Cool. <laughs> Istanbul or Islamabad? Istanbul. Culture. Yeah, there are more things. To, uh, there are more things to do. It's more. Yeah. Uh, it's lively in a different way. Sure. <laughs> Fair enough. And hipper. Yeah. Gol gappe or pakore? Pakore. Okay. 
Are you a traveler or a bookworm? I think this is um, <laughs> obvious. Let's go for bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was a very obvious, obvious one, yeah. Cricket or football? Ah, very easy. I do not know anything about cricket. Sorry, <laughs> Pakistan. In Holland, we don't grow up with it. Exactly. It's all about football. For all me. right. Mountains or beach? I think I know the answer to this one yeah, as well. Yeah, it it's, it's definitely mountains. A beach is too easy. Like yeah. you get your car, you drive up to it and you're there. And you're like, oh, wow, beautiful, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mountains is before you get to the top of the mountain, you have had a journey. Yeah. Which will you never forget in your life. So definitely mm. mountains. Cool. The best thing about Pakistan? It's people. Amazing. Great. Okay, and now it's time for you to sign our visitor's book. Here we go. Just your name and your comments here. Here or here? Here. <laughs> okay, all right, let's see what you wrote. Pakistan, thank you for giving me so many new travel experiences and inspiration. You people are amazing. All right, thank you so much for being on the show today. I had a lovely time with you and I hope you decide to return to Pakistan soon. Oh, for sure. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. That's it for today. Please join me again next week. Goodbye.